All right, how's it going guys? Uh, thanks for checking in and doing your homework. I want to talk to you about the law of supply and then also the uh, six supply shifters in this video today. Remember the law of supply is pretty simple. As price goes up, I'm willing to supply more of my products, so supply goes up. As price goes down, I'm making less of a profit, so I'm willing to supply less of my product because I'm not making as much of a profit. So basically it goes like this. As price goes up, supply goes up. As price goes down, supply goes down. That's really simple. There's also six things that can make supply shift. So we know that price makes supply go up or down along the original supply curve. Uh, so if you draw a supply curve, this S1, price moves along this line up and down, right? Um, and uh, supply moves with it. But there are some things that can make supply shift, either an increase in supply, a shift to the right, or a decrease in supply, a shift to the left. In fact, there's six things that can do that. Let's talk about the first one, okay? First one is a change in cost of inputs. Change cost of inputs. Okay. Every product is made with different uh, inputs, which are the land, labor, uh, and uh, uh, natural resources that go into making a product. All that stuff goes into making a making a product, whether it's a cell phone or a smart board or a light bulb, whatever. All those things that go into it, we call inputs. Okay? Land, labor, and capital. So if the cost of those inputs change, that can affect supply. If the cost of those inputs goes up, well then it costs me more to make my product, so I'm going to make less of it. Okay? If the cost of those inputs goes down, it's now cheaper for me to make those products, and I'm going to make more of it. Okay? So that's our first one. That's pretty simple. Let's go ahead to our second one. This is a change in the number of producers. This is another really simple one when you think about it. Uh, anytime there's a change in the number of producers, usually the supply is going to go up because there's more people making it. So if we had one shoe company in town making shoes, and now we add a second shoe company in town making shoes, we've just doubled the supply of shoes, right? And then vice versa is true. If one of those uh, factories closes, shoe factories closes, now we only have one factory open making shoes, then the, the supply just went down. Okay? So based on the number of producers, that can affect supply. Let's go ahead and go with our third one here. All right, this is a change in supply due to natural disasters. Change in supply due to natural disasters or international events. Fine. Let's take one of these at a time, because it's kind of split into two. Into two. Natural disasters are things like uh, earthquakes, uh, hurricanes, tsunamis, floods, things like that. Um, anytime there's a natural disaster, usually the supply of a product will be going down. Um, and that's just kind of a natural thing. When you think about a flood that happens in a country, uh, if it floods factories, those factories have to shut down, then the supply goes down with it. Okay? The second part of this is uh, international events. And uh, international events could be like wars or a change in government or things like that that can cause the supply of products to change. Uh, for instance, the Iraq War, uh, where there's a lot of oil in Iraq, and during the war that oil wasn't being produced at a high level, so the supply of uh, oil went down during the Iraq War. That's an international event that happened that caused supply to change. All right, let's move on to our next one. And I think that is a change in uh, technology, yeah. So a change in technology, this one's really simple to figure out. Um, usually a change in technology allows us to make something faster and quicker and cheaper than we could before because a computer's doing it or a robot's doing it or there's some new, uh, uh, new machine that allows us to make it quicker and cheaper. So usually if it's quicker, cheaper, faster to make a product, do I want to make more of it? Sure I do because now I'm making more of a profit. So that means supply is going to go up. So usually technology causes an increase in supply, okay? Now sometimes, maybe I can think of one instance where technology would actually cause a decrease in supply. I'll ask you about that in class tomorrow, but I'll let you think about that tonight, okay? So I'm trying to figure that out. Let's go ahead and move on to our fifth uh, shifter, um, and that's a change in producer expect expectations. Okay, change in producer expectations. 
So when I'm, that means if I'm a supplier of a product, I have expectations sometimes of what the price, how the price is going to go up or down in the future. Uh, just like consumers have a change in expectations, so do producers. And as a producer, if I think the price of something is going to go up in the future, something that I make is going to go up in the future, I might decrease the supply of that product now so I could sell more of it later. Okay? So a lot of times you'll see this in agriculture with farmers. Farmers might keep their supply of corn in the, in the grain bin or um, uh, in the silo uh, because they think the corn prices are going to go up in the future and then they'll sell their corn then when the price is higher and make a higher profit. Okay? That's a change in producer expectations. All right, our last one is a change in government policy. Okay, changes in government policy. That's pretty simple. All right, there's basically two things the government can do. They can provide a subsidy or they can do something called an excise tax. All right. Subsidies are pretty awesome. Uh, subsidy is where the government actually pays you to make a product or to help you make a product or pays you not to make something. Okay, that seems like a pretty good deal if you're a producer. So a subsidy actually usually increases the amount of the product you make, although sometimes it'll, it'll cause you to decrease it, and we'll talk about why. Um, so a subsidy sometimes is uh, good for it. They want a company to produce more of something because maybe it's good for our economy or we think it'll help our economy in the future. So the government will actually pay part of the cost. A good example of that is things like solar panels. Government will pay uh, solar panel companies uh, part of their cost to produce those solar panels because in the long run they think uh, the more we use solar energy in our country, the better off we are as a country. We don't rely on foreign oil and we're using a clean energy, a renewable energy. So it pays, the government thinks it will pay off in the long run if we have more buildings and houses that are fitted with these solar panels. The government pays part of the cost these solar panel companies are willing to produce more of them at a lower price, and then people are, more people are willing to buy them and put them in their houses and their buildings. Okay? The other opposite side of the coin here is an excise tax. An excise tax is a, a tax that is put on producers so they will produce less of a product. Uh, an example would be cigarette companies. The government will charge a cigarette company a, cert, a, a, a tax on a certain number of uh, boxes of cigarettes they make to drive up the cost of those cigarettes. The idea of cigarettes cost more money, well then less people will smoke and in the long run that's better off for a society and it cuts down on a lot of our health care costs in our society and insurance costs because not as many people are getting sick with cancer and other diseases because of cigarettes. So this excise tax is a tax on the producer and of course if it costs them more to make the product, who do they pass that cost on to? They pass, pass it on to you, the consumer, by raising the price. So an excise tax is kind of a bad deal uh, for us as consumers and also for producers. It's kind of a a way of forcing you to produce less of a product. Okay, I forgot to tell you about a subsidy. The uh, last thing about a subsidy is sometimes it's used uh, so that uh, people will produce less of a product, primarily farmers. Farmers, sometimes there is a uh, surplus of a certain uh, farm product like corn and, and when there's a surplus that means there's a lot of the product out and the price is very low because there's so much of it. Well if the price stays low for too long then a lot of farmers can go out of business. That's bad for our economy. So the government steps in and says, hey, we'll actually pay you not to plant corn this year. Okay? That will 